This is the Guild Hall at the heart of my hometown, Oswestry. It was once the home to the town courts and library and jail cell and all sorts of other features such as the clerk's office and the council chamber that still reside there today. It was also, once upon a time, the home to this chap here, George, or as I like to call him, Grandad. So, without further ado, let's take a look around this absolutely magnificent building and hear some stories of the good old days growing up in a place like this. The reason we moved to the Gildar, we used to live in Muller Street. My dad worked on the council, and this job came up as caretakers for the Gildar. So we got the job, and that's the reason we moved. And that was in about 1947-ish. My early memories of when we moved was I couldn't get over. We had a bathroom with some hot water that used to run. That's we never had. In the winter, it was very warm because well, my dad had to keep the boiler going. It was a coke boiler. And he had to keep that going for 24 hours a day in the winter to save the place freezing up. In the winter, I had that many friends because it was the warmest place. So in the winter nights, we'd have loads and we'd be in the passageway playing or, better still, some nights we could go up into the guild hall, upstairs into the guild hall, and we could go up play in the courtroom. And we'd be a judge and all the rest of it. They had steps leading from the courthouse, the court, down into the, the cells. But you can still see from outside the bars over the window. And that's what we would do, bring the prisoner up. Oh, he's going to be sentenced, take him down. And that's how we used to play. And then other times, we play hide and seek. Still with all these many friends, which I never saw in the summer. <laughs> Inside one of the offices, there was a spiral staircase going up into the library. So at the weekend, Friday night, we would go up, borrow a book, and with that would be us for the weekend. We'd read that book and then take it back on the Sunday. In the summer, it was the coolest place in the town because the eating was off then, so it was quite cool down there. But uh, we didn't have many friends playing then. But always in the winter, we had loads of friends. And I can remember in the courthouse where we used to play, they used to be looking up at the, where the magistrate used to sit there was a door on the left hand side of him and that led into the magistrate's room. That's, there was a table and a few chairs where they would sit when they were going in. The thing. And on a Saturday night, my mum and my granny and myself would go up there, sit on the chairs about eight o'clock on a Saturday night. We'd been over to Smith's the Chippy on the Bailey. We'd sit up in this room, looking down onto the Bailey head, eating the chips and watching the soldiers coming out of the pubs drunk. And that used to be our entertainment on a Saturday night. My mum and dad, they'd have to start cleaning the guild all out at half past five to six when the people went. And they would go all up that big building on the run, the two of them, like one side, one end and the other, and do that, clean it. Some nights, it might be one o'clock in the morning, There'd be a knock on the door. My dad or my mum would go to the door. It was a place, there's a light left on, up in the top, or you can see a glow from electric fire in the, up at the top. So one of them had to go all the way up, switch the light or the electric fire off, and then try and get back to sleep at about one or two o'clock in the morning. That was a regular thing. Because uh, some people, I can remember, used to come back now and again to do some work. And that's why they were most probably left on. The spiral staircase going up from this office, there was a reading room at the bottom. And they would have papers on boards. And I can always remember that some, when the workhouse was still going up order, when he had to be turned out, I don't know, was it nine o'clock or something like that? Some of the men used to come up in the winter. They would come into the reading room. And it'd sit there all day because it was warm. 
and that's what they used to do. I can always remember them. They would come there, sit there, perhaps go and find somewhere to have something to eat if they had any money, and then um, come back. And when it was time to go back, I know uh, it was closing the guild hall, they would have to leave. But that was a regular thing in the winter. Nowhere else for them to go, so warmest place in town, so that's where they sat. In, in the coke house, as we called it, there was a, a door, an inch door that would open out. Not a big door, just a small door, and it was up perhaps four, five, six foot. You'd have to climb up to it. And when you opened that, you were more or less into some of the foundations of the Gildal. Loads of rubble, brickwork, old pillars holding different things up, and very dirty, as you, you would imagine, and very dark. So we didn't know what was running around in there. You can imagine there must have been something. And it wasn't really a place you would like to go on your own because if somebody closed the door behind you, that would be the end of it. <laughs> You'd be part of the foundations for life. So on that dire note, I think we will draw that section of the video to a close. But don't worry, I've got loads of recordings of my granddad already. And we've got some ideas for some more specific stories and footage that we will be filming and putting together in the future. So please do stay tuned, like the Facebook page I see Oswestry for more things or tune into Sort of Interesting on YouTube for more from the local area. But in all seriousness, my own thoughts on this incredible building and my own thoughts on growing up hearing these stories of antics that my granddad used to get up to. You can imagine that when I was younger, the idea of having the courtroom and the jail cell and the library and everything to just run around at night and out of work hours was it was almost like the childhood dream come true of being locked in a literal museum as well. Of course, the museum was there, and that's some of the uh, clips that we haven't yet used. My granddad talking about having all these various artefacts from around the world, and there was a machine gun that was hidden away in there. Obviously not a, an active live ammunition uh, firing weapon, of course. Um, but again, you can imagine being a child and having stuff like that, that you can just go up and nose around. Although he was very clear to point out that they didn't uh, use or mess around with any of the artefacts in the museum, just to uh, clear his name there, if anything turned up broken about 50 years ago. Um, but in all seriousness, it's obviously a fascinating thing just on the personal family history. But the museum, as you're seeing here, has got an extraordinary amount of artefacts in it from all sorts of areas of history, from really recent stuff to World War Two era to way back hundreds of years into the past to the medieval era. And of course, Oswald Street's got the Iron Age hill fort right on the outskirts. So there's just so much history all around the place. I also want to make sure that I say an absolutely massive thank you to everybody who works in this building as there's a lot of staff involved and you've got some people in here so knowledgeable about Oswestry and its history that even after living here for 32 years and in the surrounding area, I feel almost as if I've never stepped foot in the place when you hear just how much knowledge and well, just the it's there's just some fantastic people here, and I'd like to thank everybody for humouring me and also for taking me around this building, especially while the museum was closed and it was all quiet, so that I could have a good nose around and see some of the parts that aren't normally open to the public, so that I could see places that my granddad has talked about in the past, and again. I just can't thank everybody involved in this building, the museum and everything enough. So thank you very much. Um, and I hope that you don't mind that you'll see me again soon to do some more filming. In the future, I'll be looking more specifically at some of the objects in the museum. As again, there's just some fascinating stuff here. And there's stories that I'm sure that even a lot of local people haven't heard. And well... Hopefully you'll tune in to Sort of Interesting on YouTube, to Sort of Interesting on Facebook and the IC Oswestry Facebook page. And really, I suppose, I'm not going to plug too much of my stuff as you know the drill by now. There's loads of links in the descriptions, books about boat life, all that sort of stuff. 
when really, well, oh yeah, of course, I forgot almost one of the most important thank yous that I managed to actually convince my granddad to do some recording. So thank you very much, granddad. And I hope that you approve of the usage of uh, your quality content. Uh, well, I'll be seeing you again soon to record some more stuff. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody. Until the next time, have an absolutely fantastic day. Keep it interesting. Keep it Oswestry worthy. And of course, my friends, farewell.